What is up guys? We're back with another BIOS video and today we're going to be checking out the BIOS here on the Gigabyte Z890 Eagle Wi-Fi 7. Now before we get started, if you're wondering how do I get to the screen, like how do I get into the BIOS, all you have to do is when you power on your system, just keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard, not your backspace. Just keep on hitting that delete and you'll be dropped into this menu. Now this BIOS should be pretty much the same across Gigabyte's entire Z890 motherboard line. Obviously, if you have something like an Aorus board or something like that, the colors might be a little bit different. And again, depending on the board you have, you might have a few different settings, but overall the layout should be pretty much the same. So when you do drop into the BIOS, you are dropped into easy mode. You can easily toggle between easy mode and advanced mode just right here. Just super easy toggle here. So in easy mode, we have help right here, which brings up some shortcuts. You can change your language. You can load your defaults, which let's go ahead and load our defaults so we can show you everything as default. Um, save and exit. We have our favorites menu, which goes into the advanced mode favorites, which I'll talk about. Um, and then we have search again. So you can search for something in the BIOS. If you're looking for a setting, it should pop up there and it should be easy to find. Now for our information, gives us all of our information on the motherboard that we're running, the BIOS version, the CPU, the RAM, and the microcode version that we're running. Moving over here, we have a live readouts of our CPU frequency and memory frequency, and then our CPU temperature and system temperature, and then our P core, E core voltage, as well as our memory voltage. We have this gigabyte performance drive over here. And essentially you can select Intel default baseline, Intel default performance, Intel default extreme or gigabyte default. By defaults, you know, if again, we put everything back to the low defaults, it is set to Intel default performance and I would pretty much just leave it on there. We have live readouts of our CPU uh, or our fans that we do have connected. So we have both the CPU fan and CPU optional fan connected and we can go ahead and see our speeds here. Now, there is a shortcut for Smart Fan 6. So if we click into that, we get this really nice graphical interface that allows us to essentially set all the curves and everything for all of the fan headers that are on the board and get some more information as far as like temperatures and things like that and set CPU fan warnings and all of that. Under peripherals, this gives us a kind of like a view of everything that we do have installed. So our PCI Express X16, we have a card installed there and then our M.2Q, we do have a Patriot Viper VP4300 in there. This is really good to see because if you do install something like an M.2 drive or something and it's not showing up in Windows, you can actually see if it's being detected by the motherboard itself. Over here, we have our boot sequence. And again, we can click in and kind of set our boot sequence, but really easy to give you sort of a visual overview of your boot sequence. Under DRAM status, it shows us, you know, our memory that we have installed. Uh, DDR5 Auto Booster, and then XMP, um, and then XMP Profile. So again, if you're installing Windows for the first time or everything, you want to make sure you have your XMP Profile enabled. If your kit has an XMP Profile, it will just show up here. You just click it and boom, you're good to go. We have quick access, so there's a handful of things. One thing is QFlash that allows you to easily flash your BIOS with the flash drive. Um, if I click into that, it will go ahead and open QFlash. Now, interestingly enough, by default, resizable bar is not enabled, so we can go ahead and enable that. Memory boot mode, we have SPD info, so this gives you information on your memory. You can see all of your XMP profiles and, and everything like that. Uh, preferred operating mode and fast boot, and then S SPD setup, again, gives us all of our SPD information and everything like that. Um, and that, that's kind of all what you're getting in easy mode. As long as we have the boot sequence and XMP profile, you should be pretty good to go when you do your first Windows install. Now, if you want to go ahead and do anything as far as system tuning, overclocking and everything like that, you want to go into advanced mode. Now, typically when you go into advanced mode, you're dropped into the tweaker uh, tab here, but because we went into favorites, it pushed us over to favorites. Now this favorites menu allows you to add any setting in the BIOS to this favorites menu. So it's all in one place. So if there's something you're changing a lot, you don't have to jump through multiple menus. Everything will be right here. Now going into tweaker, this of course is gonna be all of your tuning settings, uh, CPU clock ratios, efficiency clock ratios, advanced CPU settings, all of the different settings 
that go along with your CPU when it comes to pretty much everything is going to be in here. You can see you have your voltage limits, everything, active turbo ratios, uh, enabling or disabling cores, all that kind of stuff, power limits, everything, C states, everything with your CPU is going to be in here. We can also set some things with our, our DDR5. Again, your XMP profile is right here. And if you didn't do it in easy mode, you just select this. And again, you can select your XMP profiles pretty easily here. We can go into advanced memory settings. And again, you have some settings here. We can bring up that same SPD info and the same SPD setup as well. Really easy to do that. Memory channels timing and memory training settings. So again, if you wanted to go into advanced timings, you can see everything here. Or if you wanted to tighten or loosen your timings, you could do that here as well. Um, and then we move down to voltages. So all of our voltages are going to be here. CPU, vCore, everything is going to go ahead and be right here. All the voltages that you want. And then you are some advanced voltage settings that are going to be right here, as well as CPU and VRM uh, settings in your load line calibrations. And then at the bottom, we have our DRAM voltage controls which again, you can set and you can go into DDR5 voltage control and see everything there as well. So everything to do with system tuning, overclocking is all going to be in this tweaker menu. It is pretty long um, as you can see, but everything is here. So it should be pretty easy to go ahead and find all of your settings. Now, if we go into the settings menu, we have platform power, IO ports, miscellaneous and PC health status. So going into platform power, Again, these are just like certain power settings, ERP, resume by alarm, things like that uh, we can set there. IO ports, so this is essentially everything else that's on the board and its settings. So internal graphics, onboard LAN controller, you can enable or disable all of that stuff. Um, PCIe link speed configuration, so you have that. Um, and one thing I don't like about this BIOS that I have noticed is that if I go into a sub menu, and go into another sub menu. If I go back, I typically you'd hit escape, that goes back. And if I wanna go back, it wants me to exit the BIOS. It doesn't bring me back to that main menu, which is really weird. So I have to hit setting and then go back into IO ports and then I'm back here. But if I wanna go back to that main settings menu, I can't hit escape. That is one thing that's kind of weird about this BIOS. But in any case, like I said, IO ports, um, Gigabyte Utilities Downloader Configuration. So when you first install Windows and it's your first boot, when you boot into Windows, it will ask you if you want to install the Gigabyte Utilities Downloader. I would suggest this because it's going to have all your drivers and make everything a lot easier for you to install. Um, but you can disable this. Now, once you install it, it will never ask again. Um, but if you did want to turn it off, there it is right there. I'm going to go back. Um, USB configuration, again, everything here to do with USB and you can turn off, uh, you know, mass driver support and, and all that stuff. Everything to do with USB is right here. Network stack configuration, NVMe configuration. And again, you can see information on the drives you do have installed. SATA configuration, more or less the same. Um, each SATA port, you can go ahead and configure and do everything with that. VMD setup and then Thunderbolt configuration and then your 2.5 gig LAN configuration there as well. So every, like I said, everything that's on the board is going to go ahead and be right here. Um, under miscellaneous, you have LEDs and system state, power state. So that means the LEDs of the board are going to be on. Um, then you have your trusted computing settings and acoustic noise settings, which is something I haven't seen and acoustic noise mitigation. I'm not sure what that is, but we have that there as well. So that is essentially the settings menu. We get a PC health status, and this just gives us a real-time readout of our voltages and things like that on the board. So that's, that's all that is. Under system info, again, this is sort of like the main info page that you would typically see when you drop into a BIOS, but again, gives us all of the BIOS information, Everything here, the plug-in devices info, again, same thing that we saw on the easy mode, everything that sort of is installed there. Um, and again, we get this whole set of settings right here that are in the system info. And these drop you into different settings, again, that we've already gone through in the settings menu, but like everything is right here. 
um, which is really weird to see in the system info settings. But if you wanted to, again, say go into USB configuration, if we double click, we get into USB configuration again um, from this main menu, which is really weird. I don't know if all this stuff should be in the settings menu, um, but it is all right there. Under boot, we get everything to do with boot options, setting up administrator password, user password, setting up secure boot. It's all right here. And then finally, we have the save and exit. So we can load, load our optimized defaults here. We can save and exit, exit without saving. We also have the boot override, which is really great. So if you are installing from a flash drive, you can boot to that first. So then on the restart, it won't try to boot from that same flash drive. Um, and then we can also save and load the profile. This BIOS is very easy to operate. It's not laggy or anything like that. All of the settings are pretty easy to find. I did, like I said, that weird that you have to, if you go into a setting, you can't hit escape. It wants you to exit fully. You can't go back sometimes is a bit weird, but overall this BIOS is pretty standard and it shouldn't be that hard for you to find your different settings. Now, this video was just to show you the BIOS and show you the different menus. If you have a specific question about this BIOS or any Gigabyte V890 BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.